before 6 p.m. The first detainees were released just after 6. More are to be released at midnight. Armed occupations and security zones outside of designated areas are to be removed within 10 days under the supervision of the British Commissioner and the Commonwealth Observer. State of emergency imposed by the government is to be lifted in stages during this period. Parts of the country are still without essential services. Most state facilities in the North Island remain closed. Queenstown and the Whanuapai Air Force Base are the only operational international airports. The Waitamata and Manukau Harbours and the Port of Tauranga remain under blockade this evening but are expected to be open tomorrow. Wellington Harbour will remain closed for at least the next two days. The volatility of the New Zealand dollar continued as the financial markets reacted to the rapidly moving events but is currently near the historic lows reached earlier in the week. Trading on the New Zealand Stock Exchange remains suspended. Public reaction in Māori communities and in many suburbs of Auckland have been jubilant, with reports of spontaneous street parties. Reactions in other areas have been muted. Mayors from across the country are convening special sessions of their councils to consider the implications of the agreement. Leaders of the liberation movement have proclaimed tomorrow a day of celebration and called for a public holiday to be observed. The New Zealand Parliament has been sitting in urgency to pass the legislation needed to bring the agreement into operation. The Deputy Prime Minister introduced the nearly 200-page bill into the House earlier this evening, saying it was a necessity for future race relations and an inevitable constitutional development. He said the coalition would survive and there was no possibility of an early election. The finance minister told the House the fiscal impact over the next three years would widen the government's deficits and that prolonging the crisis would be economically unsustainable. The leader of the opposition told the chamber that their party would be supporting the bill through all stages, but doing so reluctantly as the caucus had reservations over immediate changes to constitutional legislation. In an emotional speech, the leader of New Zealand First has said the party's abstention was a matter of principle and that Parliament should not countenance surrender to kidnapping, extortion and terrorism, but nor should Parliament countenance the Crown going back on its word. <laughs> the Green Party co-leader, who rose in reply, said that Māori had endured over 150 years of kidnapping, extortion and terrorism at the hands of the Crown. So 150 hours of hacking, occupation and activism was a comparatively small inconvenience to achieve a just peace. The bill is currently in the second reading phase and needs to be read a third time before it can become law. The President of the New Zealand Police Association has objected to the reform of policing and the amnesty and indemnity clauses for offences relating to their members. The acting police commissioner could not be contacted and his whereabouts are unknown. Police media contacts have not been taking calls and police websites have not been updated since this morning. The spokesperson for the New Zealand Defence Force said the Chiefs of Staff were meeting with the Defence Minister and would make no further statements until that conference had concluded. Under the terms of the agreement, foreign military staff vessels and aircraft visiting the country are to be limited in total, and only British forces will be permitted to enter and operate in the autonomous areas. The Commonwealth Observer Group is to monitor and report on the removal of cordons and movement of security forces, and on the referendum which are to be conducted. New Zealand Foreign Minister and an Iwi delegate are due to address the United Nations Security Council in New York in the next hour. The pair will brief the council on the terms of the settlement and the question of the security situation. The exact terms of the British ratification are still being negotiated. The points of contention include removing references to New Zealand from the Statute of Westminster, altering the New Zealand Boundaries Act 
and transitional provisions for restoring appeals to the Privy Council. For British subjects to renounce their New Zealand citizenship and be issued with British passports. And for the United Kingdom to act as a custodian for a decolonisation fund and for making contributions to it. The details of the British acceptance will be contained in letters which are to be exchanged between the tribal authorities and the New Zealand and British governments. British Foreign Secretary and remarks made outside No. 10 Downing Street shortly after the signing of Auckland told journalists the exchange would occur tomorrow in Buckingham Palace, at which the Queen would preside. The Foreign Secretary said the Queen would be appointing a High Commissioner for the decolonisation of Her Majesty's South Pacific Territories to be based in Auckland. Consuls would be appointed to those territories who requested it in order to carry out the work of the High Commissioner. Foreign Secretary confirmed that the British government's intention is to complete a full retrocession and transfer of powers in each territory by 2035 at the latest. Now for some more details of the agreement. The settlement contains acknowledgement of earlier treaties connected with the establishment of the British Protectorate. It confirms the 1835 Effort Declaration of Independence as the basis of national sovereignty and continues the 1840 Treaty of Waitangi as supreme law over the whole country. The agreement will create areas of autonomy as a prelude to independence, initially in the north and east of the country. These territories will have their own administrations and will compose distinct jurisdictions operating within a new division of the New Zealand Army. These territories will have some ability to determine the extent to which national legislation is to apply. A referendum will be conducted in the remaining areas to determine how the settlement will apply to them. The first of which is to be held at the time of the next general election in the Auckland area. The mixed member proportional electoral system is to be kept largely intact. The threshold for a party to enter parliament 